Hi everybody, welcome to the channel if you're new, welcome back if you're a subscriber, special thanks to all my patrons, my name's Neil and it's time for the next episode of QI. This is another viewer recommendation from the YouTube channel. Um, we are going to series F, episode seven. This one's called Fingers and Thumbs. Um, it was recommended to me by a bunch of people, so I, I'm not sure what I've got in store for me. I don't know who the guests are, so I don't know whether it's a particular moment or a special guest star or, or what. But I'm optimistic, which is easy to be when you're about to watch an episode of QI. I haven't really watched a dud of an episode yet, but um, the fact that a, a bunch of people recommended this one to me makes me think it's going to be a, an, an especially good one. So, no point in talking. Let's jump into it. This is episode 7 from Series F, Fingers and Thumbs. Tonight we're all fingers and thumbs, faces and feet, and other physical features beginning with F. We have Joe Brand. Nice, right, so we like Joe. Dara O'Brien. We like Dara. Phil Jupiter. We like Phil. And uh, Alan Davis. All right, it's a good lineup. This is encouraging. We have a special forfeit word. If you use a particular F word at any stage of the season, <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, Alan, do you enjoy fargling? Fargling? Am I fargling now? Fargling? No, I hope you're about to. It's an American well word that's sometimes used for a game that involves your hands and fingers. <laughs> rock, paper, scissors. Yes! Like paper, scissors, stone, or rock, paper, scissors. Scissors, paper, stone? Who calls it that? You have a chance to go double or quits with paper, scissors, stone. But Stephen, I can me. only get a forfeit if I say <laughs> 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 Okay, I can see where this episode's going. One, two, three. Oh! Fargo. It's a draw. By the way, does anyone know instantly what is the best opening move of Paper, Scissors, Stone. Who calls it Paper, Scissors, Stone? It's either Rock, Paper, Scissors or Rochambeau. Paper, Scissors, Stone? Is Stone the most common? Interestingly, people think Stone is the most common. They go paper, According so to the new scientists, scissors. the best tactic is to play Scissors. Though now everybody knows that, everyone will start with Scissors, of course. Always making sure you play it with a Saudi shoplifter. <laughs> do rock, couldn't they? Yeah. <laughs> oh, sometimes Joe is hilarious. The Abrahams are going to do question marks. <laughs> <laughs> rock, paper, <laughs> quizzical expression. <laughs> <laughs> now, in India and Indonesia, they don't use paper, scissors and stone. They use animals. Do you know? Play elephant, yes. cow. No. Elephant, cow. Kestrel. <laughs> Kestrel. Yeah. Does a kestrel carry off the elephant, or is the elephant <laughs> eating? Oh, no. Elephant covers kestrel. <laughs> kestrel <laughs> eats ant. Uh, elephant beats human. This one. Ant and human beats, beats ant. Please tell me, human beats ant. <laughs> <laughs> human does beat ant. How does ant beat elephant? They're no, scary. In the same way that mice supposedly frighten elephants, ants frighten elephants. Mice do frighten elephants. Check out MythBusters. Paper what? doesn't really beat stone, does it? It's an engineering question. I'm not prepared to answer. <laughs> Fair enough. There you are. That's fargling for you. What does fargling actually mean? Is it just the act of playing rock, paper, scissors? I'd like I refuse to call it paper, scissors, Dara stone. Put the pencil between your teeth. Actually, if you would. Wouldn't you rather we had a ball gag, Steve? <laughs> does this like bite down because this is going to hurt? Could you put your pencils in holding the money with your lips? Not your teeth. This reminds me of my husband. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I may not remove them until I say so. That's quite important. And my question mm -hmm. is this. On the face of it, which is funnier, quack or moo? Wee, wee, wee! Moo. Quack. Quack. Because you've got a K in it. Yes, is the right answer. Is this not like a bad move in a spoken word comedy show? <laughs> <laughs> Shooting my words very carefully here. 
essentially disabled the four contestants. Uh, <laughs> could somebody please call social services? <laughs> To say a k, you have to smile. Oh, it's a smiley face. Absolutely. And people think that you're going to be funny. In the way you have, which makes you smile. Turn it out. In which... It's not making me <laughs> smile. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, bang. Oh! oh. oh. Uh, so well, that someone do a rock. <laughs> <laughs> I can hardly do a... A kicker! A rock of fire! A rock! You can take your pencils out of your mouth. No, 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 no! I like it! I'm taking it out of the rest of the show! I'll put a pencil in your mouth! Let's see how the rest of the series goes! Words containing the letter K are the funniest because they force you to smile. It's called facial feedback. What else can you tell us about a duck's quack? Is there anything interesting about a duck's quack? I feel like I'm smiling when I say quack. It has no echo. Oh! Uh, a man from Salford University <laughs> actually put a duck in a reverberation chamber in order to find out if this was true because it is so prevalent a myth. Why should we believe the things you say on this quiz? <laughs> a man took one to a chamber and <laughs> tested them. No, let's test ourselves. I approve of your scientific view. method. Yes. What's the ideal way to kiss a Frenchman? With their consent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well put. Yeah. Two in Paris, three in rural France. And if you go to very rural France, it's actually, it can be kiss, 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 kiss. You can yeah, do very times. good. I mean, three is two in Belgium and Holland. Yes, you're absolutely right. They always do three And there. now the snogging forecast for... <laughs> 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 France. Uh, Brittany, <laughs> one, some saliva. <laughs> Paris, <laughs> two, occasional tongue. <laughs> Surely they don't kiss each other five yeah. times, do they? They really have little to do in Corsica, do they? Yeah. <laughs> Can you tell me what sort of person kisses five times? Of course I can. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> If you're unsure about whether to do one cheek or two, the best way to deal with it is to cut their genitals while you're doing it. <laughs> and they, won't, they won't mind how many kisses. They won't even with consent. In America, it's strictly one cheek. They're very baffled by Europeans doing any more than one. Americans barely kiss one cheek. Apparently in Spain, it has to be the right cheek first. How many times? Really? Cheek. Yes. So what happens if you go for the left uh, first? They'll... See, I'm like half Dutch, and in Holland, it's definitely left, right, left. German travel guide to London said the kiss of friendship between men is strictly avoided as inclining towards the sin regarded in England as more abominable than any other. Cue barging, presumably. Mm. <laughs> uh, that or sodomy. But you didn't leave with a cue for sodomy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so cut in. Yeah. Don't cut in excuse, on the buggery excuse line. Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> what can you tell about a footballer from the size of his fingers? Is it his position on the WAG penetration index? <laughs> There's always something about the index being longer than the one the other side of the... The ring finger. Yes, you're right. It's, it's actually kind of difficult to do the ratio between fingers two and four without being incredibly rude to whoever <laughs> happens to be in the room at the same time. Dr John Manning of the University of Liverpool. Did he take the duck into the echo chamber? He was. <laughs> it wasn't the same. No, it's a wow, euphemism. It's so much like a euphemism, I don't know where. <laughs> <laughs> Is it true that there's so much oestrogen in the water supply now that we're being rendered impotent? And... I want an explanation for the rapidly swelling size of my man bosoms, and that <laughs> may well be... I like the idea of you going into Rigby and Pella. Hello. <laughs> Conceal them. <laughs> <laughs> separate. You should, you should do <laughs> just for a laugh because they've got a woman who can tell the size of your bosoms just by looking at them right. Oh wow. Mm. And I went in and she just said to me, oh not as bad as I'd imagined. Oh. <laughs> Why don't you make my foot some pair of fun bags? <laughs> <laughs> they're, pretty, they're pretty good aren't they? Please please Stephen I'm already pitching a semi. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this talk and I'll be oh. knocking the desk over. <laughs> the 2D, 4D ratio is predictive of infertility, autism, dyslexia, migraine, stammering, immune dysfunction, myocardial infarction and breast cancer even, as well as perceived dominance and masculinity, but not attractiveness, and including things like possibly psychopathic tendencies and, and ability at football. Dear God, which one do you want to be longer?
What does a thorny devil do with his feet? Geneve, you know what Because I feel devil like my, a, my a ring thorny, is longer than my index. The very attractive animals doing that very thing that you're mentioning oh, there. Sorry. sorry, I kind of coughed and sneezed <laughs> and wet myself all the time. <laughs> I think the fiver is mine. <laughs> Do men wet themselves when they cough, no, when they get sometimes, old? Sometimes you wet yourself if you dream about going to the toilet. Yes. Yeah, we've all... Yeah, and yeah, as yeah. you... Yeah. <laughs> dreaming about going to the toilet, I, you've I, got I to try think, and wake up really. I, I don't think there's that way. <laughs> I, think, I think your body decides to go, no, I'm getting rid of this, and your dream going, well, let's weave it into the narrative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so I was off, once on a boat with Elvis Presley. <laughs> oh, this is within a dream. Oh, thank you. <laughs> And then I said, excuse me, I've got to go to the toilet, and I went to bed. <laughs> in his Elvis. final unhappy days, I believe, he, he wore diapers. Well, I wouldn't be that unhappy in a nappy, would you? <laughs> unhappy in a nappy? I don't know the answer. All I do know is, as you age, you tend to wear pale trousers less and less, so that you don't <laughs> reveal the dot of shame. Uh, <laughs> there is a bit of the urethra which actually curves down before it goes back. So some of your little business yeah. will get caught there and that's the why you go to the toilet at night and you go, oh bugger. So what you're supposed to do is reach in and just give yourself a little hoi! Down around the back, like, uh, but not too far. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Two right. days after that yeah, dinner party, Dara's yeah. mates are going, not going to believe what I told it. <laughs> <laughs> These do something that. unique. Well, yeah, they can take in water in any part of their body, from their feet. If they stand in a puddle, the water doesn't just get absorbed through the skin and go into their system. system they just put their hand in a pint. <laughs> <laughs> now, how could I tell that Alan is a criminal just by looking at him? Is right. it the shifty little eyes, pointy nose and general sort of little pug face? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Um, <laughs> I've never sure. seen you happier. I've never been happier. <laughs> One day I'm really going to tell you what I think of you. <laughs> <laughs> the art of reading character through the face was taken terribly seriously. Is it his ears? Something to do with his ears? Nose. Your curly hair signifies someone who is dull of apprehension, <laughs> soon angry and given to lying and mischief. Cool, and you thought Joe was bad? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are hard-hearted, envious, close and cunning, addicted to cruelty more than love. Oh. <laughs> Pretty good well. Dara, yes. He who has a large full forehead and a little round withal is bold, malicious, high spirited, full of collar, apt to transgress beyond bounds, and yet of good wit. You are a scumbag, 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 couple of gags, scumbag, scumbag. <laughs> scumbag. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Double chin shows a peaceable disposition, but <laughs> vain, credulous, a great supplanter, and secret in all your actions. And not to mention peckish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One whose hair is of reddish complexion is, for the most part, if that not always, proud, deceitful, detracting, venerous, and full of envy. Venerous? Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> There's no art to find the mind's construction in the face. So even then, Shakespeare knew it was nonsense. A huge if only Shakespeare fell. had said something about the duck's echo. <laughs> <laughs> It would have saved everybody a lot of time. Uh, Stop, Horatio, uh, take yon duck into the cathedral and there make it sound off. She quacketh. <laughs> <on. laughs> she quacketh. No, that, that, that would be dust. Oh. <laughs> that would be duff, not dust. I do, it does annoy me when they get that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Such a pedant. Dust thou, it's not difficult. <laughs> Art thou. Good <laughs> luck, my friend. <laughs> Two, three. Oh, oh we did it. Do you stone. Scissors. <laughs> I'm just throwing matching scissors every time. How would you describe the famous Thatcher effect? Yes, you get the country to bend over. <laughs> <laughs> In the sodomy line. Where is the Thatcher effect? Do you now know what it is? Oh, I know that picture's oh. right way up, she's too frightening, so we have to put her that way. So on one of those pictures, two of the major features of the face are actually inverted in her upside-down picture. So if we were to turn them around now... Oh, the one on the left has the mouth and the eyes upside down. That. <laughs> wow. Burn the witch! <laughs> Peter Thompson at the University of York, largest plastic bottom lake in Europe. Um, sorry, it's just... <laughs>
<laughs> so anyway, Peter Johnson of the University of York, largest well, plastic bottom lake, lake in Europe. Europe. Wouldn't it be awful <laughs> if we discovered it's now been supplanted by some other lake, plastic bottomed or not? Like right. from the University of Baden-Baden. Uh, uh, hello? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hello? Yes. 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 Oh, gross and lake meet to big and plastic. <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> <laughs> York. <laughs> <laughs> I'm racking my brain trying to think of any kind of application. Short of you're you're in the middle of a swasson nuff and then you turn and go, well, how's that? Oh god, you're hideous. Oh, 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 turn it upside down, please now. I <laughs> <laughs> That's so bizarre. That's a face you don't want to see after a 69, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> A natural human instinct. We see faces everywhere in clouds. Yeah, that's things. true. And on the right, Jesus, <laughs> um, my saviour. Actually, you make yeah. Richard Dawkins look like a <laughs> Buddhist. <laughs> uh, oh, oh. <laughs> One, two, three. Jupiter's knows how to play. Jesus! Now, uh, here's an equally famous face, but what happened to her eyebrows? Tell me. They got repaired. They got shaved off on a hen weekend. No! Wow. No, actually, I'm going to give you the points there. Is that there, a common know. thing? Yeah. The fact is, Leonardo painted a full set of eyebrows and eyelashes, but successive restorations had them worn off. They're now visible in x-ray. Behind glass, could you not, like, you know, paint onto the glass, just like a Groucho Marx yeah. set of eyebrows? 90% of all the people who go to the Louvre Museum, go straight to see the Mona Lisa, spend three minutes or less looking at it, and, and then, then leave the museum. <laughs> There's but so much better stuff. Paint. Amazing shit in there. Do you know why? Get me, I'm like Brian Sewell. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at exactly the same time, Michelangelo Buonarroti was uh, putting the finishing touches to perhaps his most famous work, perhaps. Sistine Chapel. Iconic statue there ever was. Oh, David. David, of course. Okay. What use did he have 200 foreskins? He didn't make his slingshot out of it, did he? Oh! Uh, he deep fried them and invented hula hoops. <laughs> there was a rabbi who saved up all the foreskins for all his, his uh, as a moil, you know, the bris. And he dried them, he, he made a wallet out of them. Yeah, but it was amazing, if you stroked it, it became a briefcase. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, no! Just, um, oh! Saul grew very jealous and basically wanted him slain in battle. So he said to him, you can marry my daughter, but as a dowry I want a hundred foreskins from Gentile Philistines. He went into battle, he got two hundred, would you believe? Then Saul gave him his daughter Michael in marriage. <laughs> daughter Michael? They're like chocolate hobnobs, you can't. <laughs> you just can't stop. Put your fingers on the mushroomoids and Mushroom where <laughs> would you find the world's largest organ? The skin of a blue whale. <laughs> uh, in a cathedral, somewhere like um, St. Peter's in Rome, maybe. Not, Not that right. Simple. Blue whale. <laughs> oh. Is it a, a, a university? university? No, it's inside a natural phenomenon, and it's been turned into an organ. Caves. Nah. Has made these felted hammers that strike the stalactites in the cave, and they are tuned and precise. Stephen, if you'd asked us where the world's biggest xylophone was, then I might have been able to help you. It's an organ. No, is it? no, you couldn't really technically be a xylophone because xylos is the Greek for wood, and it's not wood, is oh, it? All right. No. Still not an organ. Now, what can you tell about a man from the size of his feet? Size of his shoes. <laughs> oh, come on. Genuinely, not true. Most people wear the wrong size shoes. Feet size change of his size cock. over there. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, the size of your hands is in proportion to the size of your feet. Well, why do people cock. think that your cock's to do with your foot size? It was a rumour started by clowns. <laughs> 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 what do we measure feet in? You measure them in a little slidey thing. Yeah, but what is the unit? A fraction of the slidey thing. Uh, <laughs> yes. It's called a barleycorn. It's a third of an inch. Barleycorn? A barleycorn. Barley if I go into Dulcis tomorrow and go, Good vendor of shoes! <laughs> How 
many barley corns am I this <laughs> fine day? <laughs> so every time I go in, I go, do you have them in ending in size 13? I get a speech. Where you might find it difficult to find shoes in that size. <laughs> and you do look at them and go, really? Because yeah. this is the first day I've had yeah. size 13. <laughs> <laughs> I, I size nine, and then I played poker with the witch. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> hideously wrong. Good sir, you're a barlick all too far for this job. We'll, we'll not have a look. So, how many muscles are there, incidentally, in your fingers? How many? Twenty yes. tiny fingers. One if you play your cards right. <laughs> Attention to I'll that. put the pencil in. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! You're <laughs> chopped up. No, 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 no. None. None is the right answer. What? Tap your little finger. Tap your index finger. Now tap your ring finger. <laughs> 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 it has no muscle. Oh, All it is, is it, but it has a shared tendon with the middle finger, so, so it can't even move at all. <laughs> and lastly now, which is easier, smiling or frowning? Oh, frowning. Smiling. Dear, no, in, in, yeah, in fact, costs you, nothing. you use 12 muscles. <laughs> for 12 muscles to smile and only 11 to frown. I use your 23 muscles. <laughs> <laughs> Still 23. <laughs> You know, and you do want to go, well, how many muscles exactly does it take to... Do oh, really? Uh, <laughs> one, two, two, three... Go! Someone that you don't know just comes and goes, cheer up. Oh, I know. Oh. Resting <laughs> bitch face. Cheer up. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, There's going to be some low scores this game. He's been talking stone all night. He's been talking stone all night. You think it's going to be stone? It's going to be stone. Oh, 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 one, oh, oh, two, oh, 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 three, oh, 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 yes! <laughs> In first place, with minus 24. Ouch. It's still Jupiter's. In Your second best score place, ever. with minus 26, is Joe Brown. In third place, with minus 28, Dara O'Brien. Oh, it's a close one. With minus 42, Aaron Davis. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Great episode. I totally get why that one was recommended to me. I thought I knew why early on when uh, Stephen revealed the forfeit, can't say the F word, et cetera, et cetera. And I thought that would just degenerate into craziness. And uh, no, no, that that's uh, the, 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 the pencil gag, <laughs> literally the, the gag, um, the, uh, why call it? Paper, scissors, stone. Rock, paper, scissors, or Rochambeau. But anyhow, uh, I, I, I feel like he, that's not even the British way of saying it. I feel like that's just Stephen's way of saying it. You're gonna tell me if I'm wrong. I, I get that, that's fine. But I, it just irks me. Uh, Phil's freaking hilarious when he's on. I know he's not everybody's cup of tea, but man, was he hilarious in this episode. Joe had a couple of sick burns. Dara's always great. Uh, Alan was like really riffing the, the impressions a lot in this one. Just a, just a great episode from top to bottom. Doesn't matter that the, the highest score was in the minus 20s. So what? Interesting about the the no muscles in the fingers thing. I didn't even know that, and yet I have intimate knowledge of the tendons going to those two fingers, because if you look closely, I've got a great scar here. And that's because when I was 17, I was splitting rounds of wood with a sledgehammer and a wedge. And the sledgehammer chipped. 
and that chip of metal flew into my arm right there. And it severed the tendon to those two fingers. I severed one completely and the other 40% or something. And this was like two weeks before I was off to university for the first time. Um, so I showed up in university with my, my writing hand in a splint across the country. And uh, that's how I got my nickname for, for all of university. For the next four years, I was known as Sledge. Anyhow, um, yeah, th those, those tendons are super important. I'm not sure why I brought up that story. Please don't call me Sledge in the comments. Why am I saying that out loud? I'm going to edit that out. <laughs> I love this show. This show makes me laugh. Um, the, the, there are those certain moments. I think I laugh harder on this show than just about anything else. And th th those moments seem not uncommon. Not necessarily every episode. I'm laughing every episode, don't get me wrong. But it feels like at least a couple of times a, se a series there's like a bust a gut moment where you're just laughing uncontrollably. You can't stop. One, if you play your cards right. Certainly, certainly qualified in this episode. Great episode. Thank you guys so much for recommending it. I'd love to hear more suggestions in the comments down below. And uh, until next time, everybody, take care, stay healthy. And we'll see you soon. Cheers.